Hello everyone, Warren here. Today we're looking at the setup of the Yealink W52P VoIP deck base and handset. So this you're going to be using in instances where you have a VoIP phone number or a SIP number that you're going to be setting up or you need to set up on a base. This is not going to be the normal unboxing like I normally do because I've been using this unit for a while and quite honestly I'm not quite sure where that box is right now. Nevertheless, we're going to be looking at everything you get in the box and how to set it up, plug it in, and get it functioning as it should. So, let's get straight into it. Now, the first unit that you get in the box is going to be the actual base. Now, it comes with this little WPS button that you use for connecting up handsets and can also use for setting for finding handsets. Apologies. Also, what you're going to get is the lights here on the side. Top one indicates that there's a handset connected to it. The middle one connect, indicates LAN cabling. So if you've got a LAN cable connected up between this base and your router, that should flash. And then you've got the power light as well. Now, on the bottom, not much going on there. Top, nothing as well. On this side, nothing. On the back, you do have the general serial number, MAC address that you got for this unit. And then on the side here is where you're going to find the power socket. And you're also going to find the Ethernet port. Now, this unit, I think according to Yaling, and actually you can use it on PoE as well. But with the box, they actually supply a separate power adapter for this base. And then another power adapter for the actual handsets charging dock. So, I'm going to pop that down for a bit. Then, over here, we have a look at the handset. Now, the handset is a color display. It also has... The few buttons on here as well we've got the the soft key buttons on the top we've got the voicemail button the speaker button the the pickup and and end call button and then the directional keys as well as as the number pad um, this does come with a, a battery that gets supplied in the box as well that you can just pop in and those are obviously rechargeable batteries that goes into the dock that we see sitting over there on the side now the handset's going to pop into your dock like that. And when your dock is plugged into power and your handset is switched on, you'll see there's a little section on the bottom, right over there. Uh, that will light up when your handset's connected up. We'll see what it looks like in a second. Okay, so that's what you get. So you're going to need to plug a LAN cable in between your between your actual router and your Yealink device. And then you're going to need to plug in power. So I'm just going to plug mine in right now and we're going to fast forward you guys through this video. Okie dokie. So we've now got the handset powered up. And as you see on the bottom there, I'm just going to try and lift this without removing the handset. You've got that little green light there. Okay. Now, let's have a quick look here. So yeah, so you've got that little green light. Pop that back to the side. And then we've got the actual base now on this one you will see the LAN light is on the power lights also on but now the phone light isn't on that indicates that this handset doesn't seem to be paired to this base so what we're going to do is the handset does still seem to be charging so I'm going to try and operate it on the on the base just hit okay let's go back now by default the handset is going to come up in a stage where it's searching for the base Okay, it actually seems to have connected up to the base on its own. So generally when the handset and base are delivered, they do come paired already. But if you do need to pair them, there's going to be this button here that you just need to push. And that will allow the, the base here to push out the signal using the WPS function. And you just have to do a few things on the handset to actually connect to the base. But quite actually, you just have to hit the OK button in order to connect. So now, now, what we're also going to look into is the setup of the handset to the base, which is already done. But now we want to look at how we're going to log on to the base to configure our VoIP phone number. So, let's have a quick look here. I'm going to try and bring this closer and just focus it so you can see exactly what's going on. Now, on the handset, you're going to hit the, let's just go back so that you're in the home screen. If you hit the OK button, it takes you to this section. And on the status, you want to click OK. Then for the base, we want to select base as well. So we're going to click OK on that. 
then it's going to go and grab the information for the base. So important here is that IP address that it shows up with. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to pop that IP address into your browser on your computer screen and you will be able to get to the Yale links page. Um, so yeah, so that's quite actually how you find the IP address to log onto the base. So now, without further ado, we're going to log onto the base to see what it looks like when we actually set up our VoIP phone. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is logging onto the Yale link base to actually check out the settings and save my VoIP number. Okay, so as we checked on the handset, we found out what the IP address was of the base. Just a recap on that. So you're going to go OK on the handset and then click OK for status and OK for base. This will then take a few seconds and it will give you the IP address that you would need to access the, the, the Yale link. So my IP is 192.168.8.105. Let's hit enter. Okay, so now we got the login page. Now on that login page, as for default, the username and password is going to be the word admin. So we'll just pop in admin for username and admin for password. And click on OK. No Firefox, we don't want to save that password. OK, now on this section, on the status page, important bits you're going to notice, you'll see my IP address that I just typed in. That is the WAN IP. That's the IP this base is getting from the router. Then the link status is showing connected. That indicates that this base is actually connecting to the internet. So it shows that there is connectivity right now on that base. So if we go to handset and VoIP on this section as well, you'll see the section where my one handset is connected. If you have more than one handset, you'll see more than one handset. This base can take up to five handsets connected at a time. And you can also have five VoIP accounts saved on this base at the same time as well. Now, as for having calls between your five VoIP numbers that you've saved, you'll only be able to run four calls at a time. Even though you've got five handsets and you've got five, um, five VoIP accounts, you'll only be able to run four calls at a time. Now, we've also got the start registration and start paging buttons on here. And this, the start registration button is going to be to add extra handsets to the base. So like I said, you can add up to five handsets. So if you're adding a new one, click that start registration button and then you follow a few prompts on the handset that you get. And that will allow you to connect that handset to the base. For the paging status. Now, let's say, for instance, you, you can't find your handset. It's stuck under the couch or it's in the kitchen or whatever the case may be. If you can't find your handset, if you log on to this base and you click start paging, your handset will start ringing. Then you'll be able to find your handset by following the sound. And once you find it, you'll be able to click the stop paging button. Now let's move on to the account tab. Now on the account tab, you're going to find firstly the account number that you're dealing with. So we're dealing with account one in this instance and the registration status or register status shows us disabled. We'll change that when we add the phone number. Now for the line active session, when you're going to be adding your phone number, you're going to need to switch that to enabled. And now you're going to need to find your actual phone number. So I'm just going on to my internet service provider's website to grab my phone number and just pop it in all those sections and then also to find the password. By You will find this with your service provider for your web product. Over here, we'll see the SIP server or the SIP server host that we're going to be using. And we'll always use port 5060. Then um, transport is going to be on UDP and server expires 3600. Now, this it specifically can be changed and the only reason we'll change it sometimes is because sometimes the SIP server or the session for the SIP product expires and you'll, you'll sometimes find instances where you're on a call and the call drops after a few minutes or 20 minutes or whatever the case is and what we can do in this case is we can dial that down so that the Yale link constantly tries to keep the connection 
quicker than the normal 3600. So we normally dial that down to about 360 seconds and that will allow the Yaling base to constantly try checking to make sure there's an there's access in that period or in that time period. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next. So the rest of these settings, we do not need a SIP server to and we do not need to set anything for the outbound proxy at all. So I'm going to click on confirm and it's going to go from a state of trying to register or registering to being registered. Over there we got registering and now it's registered. So I should now be able to make out phone calls. And if you pick up your handset, tell to try to dial out, you'll see that you'll be able to call out. Now, other things to check in this section is the only other thing that I would generally advise you to come to is going to be number assignment. Now, number assignment helps us in the scenario where you do have more than one handset connected up. In my case, I only have the one handset connected up, so there's no real changes I'd need to make on number assignment. Now, in this case though, let's say for argument's sake, we are connecting up more than one handset. So we've got the handsets listed down the side here, and we're on the top section here, we've got the line number and name. So essentially any VoIP accounts or SIP accounts that you would have saved. Here we see my first SIP account, my one that I've received from my ISP, that is saved on this section. And if you have any other accounts saved, they'll all appear here. Now, take note of where it's ticked at the moment. So at the moment, I've got one handset and I've got one SIP account. So for any incoming calls, they're going to come through on that one handset. If I had more than one handset, let's say I had two handsets, and I want both of them to receive calls on the one SIP account that I've saved, I'd need to make sure that it's marked over here. If you don't mark it, you're not going to receive calls on that other handset. So there is something worthwhile checking out. Now, the same goes for the bottom section here. This is going to be for the outgoing line. So if I've got more than one handset connected up, I would want to tick the second handset on the first account so that I can make calls out from this, from this handset for both of the VoIP numbers that I have. So I'll tick this option so that I can make calls out from both handsets with one VoIP account. If this is not ticked, in this scenario, I would not be able to make any calls out on handset 2. So if you're adding more than one handset and you've got one VoIP account, make sure you're ticked for outgoing calls as well as for incoming calls. Keep in mind though, that if you do have incoming calls ticked for two handsets on one account, both those handsets are going to ring until you pick one of them up. Okay, so let's just mark those or unmark those for now and we'll move on. Now, handset name. Yes, we want to discount the changes. So handset name, in this section, you'll be able to change your handset name to be more friendly to what you're trying to do. So in my instance, um, the handset is set to handset one. I'm going to change that to my phone number that I'm trying to use on handset one and click on confirm. So what that is going to do for me is that's going to change the name that is displayed on the handset so that I know what phone number I'm calling out from. So let's just go ahead and pick up the handset and we'll see on the top section of the handset there's the phone number being displayed for making out phone calls. Okay, okay. so now that we've got that all sorted, let's have a quick look here. So now that we've got the phone number display sorted and we've also got the number and handset name saved, the other settings in here, generally you won't need to use them. Now, things that I would advise to come and check out is going to be in the security section my mistake. So other things you're going to check out is going to be in settings. Now, the only reason you come to settings is if you need to, for some reason, do a reset on this base. Now, the Yaling base, as we looked at before, doesn't have a reset button like most devices do. So you'd have to log on to the device, click on the upgrade button and look for the reset to factory setting option. And you'd go click on reset to factory setting and that will go through the process of the Yaling base booting back up again in its factory default state. That would be quite it with regards to setting up the Yaling W52P. If you have any questions feel free to leave a comment 
and also if this video was informative at all give us a like and subscribe to our channel thank you so much for your time cheers